Hey, what's going on, man? Hola, amigo. Como estas? Guten Tag. Wie geht's dir? Welcome to Unity of Command. This is a custom scenario as I have already beaten the entire game with DLC. We're going to play the Winter Gavita scenario. This is December 12th, 1942. And I'm also, while playing this scenario, going to explain to you how to play the game. And this, what we have to do is the Germans, under the leadership of famed Field Marshal Erich von Manstein, mount a desperate relief attempt with what amounts too many M's and amounts to a uh, little more than three panzer divisions. This is six turns we have to do this. So as I said, I want to play this uh, scenario because I've had some requests to keep playing the game. And I've also had some requests to explain how to play the game. So I'm going to kill two birds with one stone. And as soon as we get in here, as the scenario is loaded, I'll start explaining it. If you're not looking for a... Um, I'm going to try to explain everything at the beginning of this, of, of the beginning of the scenario. If you're not looking for any of that, any of that information, just fast forward a little bit and you can uh, carry on from there on out. Okay, so here we are. Commander, the 6th Army is surrounded and an entire section of our front line has been ripped open. You have been given the hugely important task of relieving our besieged brothers in arms. Your force is not yet fully assembled, but we are out of time as Soviet armies are already massing for further offensive thrusts on other sectors of the front. Victory in 6, Decisive in 5, Brilliance Area Objective on time. Scoring, remaining prestige is added to score requisition from the OKH. Reserve only when you really need to. Scenario notes, player reorg limit is set to 2 due to the massive supply issues at this point in time. So we have 1 air attack, 1 bridge, 3 air supplies, and the Soviets have 1 air attack. Now, when you're playing the game, the way that this works is you control everything that's on the map in front of you. That you're of the, you know, obviously, that you're part of that uh, that force. So for me, I'm on the Axis side right now. I control all of these forces. AI controls the opposite. Now, the way it works is you can also be given different the. Uh, I shouldn't say theater because that's an improper term, but different. Um, abilities per round or, or per scenario so for this scenario i have this air attack that means on i can have one air attack as indicated by the upper right hand corner per round out of a total of or per turn for a total of six turns so i have a total of six air attacks i can use here i can use one bridge but i'm limited to one overall you see that in the lower left hand corner the one right there here i'm i can do three air supplies Per turn so i have three times six 18 total air supplies down here this is different things that you can you know these are your main forces per per turn per battle you can come down here into your force pool and access different units see i can deploy the 306th infantry division here drop him down right here and use him for extra firepower I can also add a specialist step to certain of these units as well. So I have a heavy tank, a tiger heavy tank, so I can go to some of these units. Say I can go to this infantry unit, add a tiger. See how this guy's already have already has a specialist step. I can't add it to him. Can't add it to this guy though. I'm gonna get into specialist steps in a second. I'm just trying to discuss reinforcement stuff with you. And this is basically resupplying the troops per turn so the first one was bring a new unit onto the battlefield this is adding a specialist step which gives them special abilities like the tiger or an 88 or, or whatever or pioneers and this one is to reinforce dudes when they've been destroyed so this guy's down to three i can add two steps each one of those is called a step and he'll be go from a strength of three to a strength of five and all it also takes an extra turn so he's not going to have that strength this turn he'll have it next turn he also going to be in supply for that as well for this guy i'm going to add the specialist step to him so he's going to have tigers with him now you also have what's called the okh reserve now this is done by prestige so every time you get a good victory say you get a brilliant victory and you get your capture objectives ahead of time and all that kind of stuff you get what's called prestige and those are just basically extra credit points or whatever. You can come down to your OKH reserve. You can get unlock special units, special steps, all that kind of stuff too. 
Now the object of the game is to control the different objectives that they give you. The way that this works is there's not really any objective to destroy the enemy units, it's to capture territory. So for here we have three. The first one is a link up that says to push into our beleaguered comrades and end their nightmare in this cursed snow. We have to capture that by turn four to capture the objective on time. We lose 200 prestige for every turn that we wait afterwards. So if we don't capture them to turn five, we learn we lose 200 possible prestige. If we capture it right away, we'd get a bonus of 200 prestige. You know, that's how that works. We got to get on that one on turn four. This is due on turn. Uh, it's kind of hard to read which when this one is. But it looks like both of these are due on turn two. I have to capture and hold the vital bridge for the XI crossing. It will be the lifeline for both our relief force and the, and the 6th army. And the XI river, which says secure the northern... I can't... This is covering up, so I can't read it. Secure the northern something of your crossing and of our relief force disastrous. So, I, you know, I wish I could read more of that. The way that this game mostly works is it's due to supply. The biggest thing is you have to watch your supplies. You want to cut out their supplies. So the Russians here have two supply, three supply depots. Depots. This one is not in the city, not on any of these roads. These are like little roads here. This one's also not on a road. This one is on a road. We have one right here, not on a road. This one's not on a road. This one is on a road. So when this road means is that you get a, a range of four supply as determined by each different supply source. So for this road, I have a range of four supply from each one of these road hexes. So I have four, or four, three, two, and then you, as you cross the river, it gets worse. So from here, four, three, two, so on and so forth. Conversely, for the Russians here, so you come right here, it's right on the road. So I have 25, 24, 23, 22, because of the supply source. So they have really strong supplies here. Now, with that being said, again, you want to cut out their supplies you want to protect your supplies because without ammunition food gasoline your troops are just not going to do anything now you can see here that these guys are low on supply because they have the exclamation point the way it works is for supplies it takes three turns the first turn that these guys are out of supply you don't notice anything the second turn you get this exclamation point the third turn, so say, you know, he just captures a play point right now. You're not going to notice anything on this turn. Second turn, you're going to have the exclamation point like these guys have. They can still attack. They can still defend. The third turn is a darker exclamation point. But with that being said, they can no longer attack or defend at, at full force or full strength. They lose some of their specialist step. They lose some of their attacking ability. And on the fifth, or excuse me, the fourth turn of being out of supply, they can no longer attack nor defend, and they just get rampage, rampage. You know, it's, they just, it's just horrible for them. So that's the supply situation. Now you also have terrain that you have to watch out for, because if you attack, attack across a river, you're not going to have a very strong, def uh, not going to have a very strong attack. Conversely, if you're defending on the opposite side of the river, you're going to have a great defense. There's swamps where it affects your attacking and defending abilities as well. Forests can do the same thing. Mountains, you cannot cross a mountain, obviously. Things of that nature. Now, you also have weather. Because we're in December 12th, we're in the prime Soviet winter. Or prime Russian winter, rather. Snow's not going to do a whole heck of a lot to you. But if you start getting into spring or the fall, when you get a little bit of mud and all that kind of junk, it'll turn the ground to... Um, turn the ground to mud and that's going to affect your supply situation so say that this was in i don't know uh october and we started having mud everywhere we'd have four supply along this road but when we got off the road instead of having a four here we might have a three here or a two or a one here because the mud would affect our supply sort situation that much worse and vice versa and finally, this little icon here shows the zones of control. What that means is, that's, what's the easy way for me to explain it? A zone of control is the, the tiles or the hexes, because each one of these is a little hex, 
the hex is around an enemy unit or your unit that's going to like grab you. It's going to catch you. Think of it like a uh, like those little thorn bushes, you know, and they have like those little pickers on them and you walk through them and then the pickers catch up on your clothes. Think of the zone of control kind of like that. So say I take this guy. Well, I, mean, I got to take this off. So you saw that there was a flag right here. That each flag indicates a zone of control. So this unit right here, this Russian unit, has zone of control over this tile. I can move this guy here, but see how I can't move him any further? Even if I push the shit there, the space bar, which allows me to move a little bit extra distance because it gives up his attack move, I'm still limited to right here. But now because he's he's gone through this, this space, because this guy's gone through that space, See, now he's in his zone of control. We control that tile. This guy can move through. You see how that works? That's what the zone of control concept. But if I move right here, I'm taken up by another zone of control and I'm stuck right there. That's essentially it for the dynamics of the game. Now, obviously, you can also see we have different nationality uh, units. We have, for example, here's German units here. We have... Romanian infantry, we have Italian infantry, we also have infantry versus um, tanks versus mechanized infantry like this. And there's different types of infantry. We have uh, regular German infantry here. Where's, and then we have, well, wow, that's not a good. You have regular infantry, then you also have like security infantry, which are weaker forces, things of that nature. And depending on which what you're attacking and with and what you're going to attack can impact the uh, outcome of the battle so for example taking this tank going against this uh, russian infantry unit i can do if you look up over here in the top right hand corner i have an 80 80 percent chance of winning this battle to a 20 percent chance of them winning it the zero there indicates the amount of losses i'm going to take and that's going to affect my steps each one of those blue little circles underneath my unit is a step. And there I'm going to deal four damage to their steps. So this guy's got, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven steps. So if I deal four damage to him, I'm gonna just on average knock off four of those, and he'll have three steps left. So that unit will be damaged but not destroyed. Once I destroy all seven steps, then the unit is off the off the table and the space is open. That's the whole step stuff in a nutshell. Now you also have what's called a specialist step and you can see it right here. Now, for example, if I'm attacking an entrenched unit, let's see if it's like these guys, see how these guys right here have like the little, little arrow pointing into the ground kind of thing right here. That means they're entrenched, they have better defenses. Now, if I have a, a unit with a pioneer like this one does, if you look up here in the right upper right hand corner has like a little German helmet it has the E on it looks like a or an M it's a pioneer unit pioneer units are great at destroying um, entrenchment so I would want to use this unit to just to attack those guys that are entrenched knock out their entrenchment then I can have a better and easier time fighting them and destroying them one thing I forgot to mention when I'm showing you the battle mechanics, you can see here also, uh, if you look in the upper right hand corner, it shows you a negative one. If you look on the far right there, it has like a little storm cloud and a negative one. That's the, um, I guess the, the damage my attack is taking because I'm attacking in winter time. So I'm not, I'm going to lose one attack for that, but I am also have a tank here. So I have plus three damage. And I have a veteran unit, so I have plus one damage. See, that's how it that that's how it works. It averages itself out. Also, you can see here it says retreat and overrun. When I attack this guy, I have an 80% chance of making him retreat off of this tile and moving back to a, a tile behind him or even further behind that. Or overrunning him, which means I attack him and my attack is just so powerful that I can move or attack again. And then that's essentially it. Tanks move far, obviously. Infantry can't move quite as far. Mechanized infantry can move farther. Uh, cavalry can use can move pretty far. 
you've got uh, veteran units you've got and they have two little uh, insignias next to them they're elite units See, like the russian here has a veteran unit with that star this this tank is not a veteran unit this guy right here has a specialist step oh that's one thing i didn't really truly cover is a specialist step stuff specialist steps are affected by different things that you can that you give each um unit so this guy has a, a katusha this is an artillery it doesn't do anything for his attack but it gives him plus six or it gives him six defense because of the artillery this guy's got 122 millimeter artillery he's got plus three for his artillery it's a towed equipment while this one is a trucked equipment so the difference between those two is that with the towed equipment you have to wait for a turn for it to be set up in place so say this this uh infantry move this infantry unit moves to this just moved to this tile and it was just he just moved there he wouldn't get the benefit of that artillery on this turn next turn he would get the benefit of that artillery and that's essentially it that is essentially it so with that let's start getting to it Now, I think the first thing I'm going to do is, well, we have to... See, this is the Battle of Stalingrad right here. These are the German forces, the 6th Army that's stuck inside Stalingrad, and they gotta try to bust out, and I gotta try to bust in. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna resupply my strongest units here. So there's a good there is a good uh, example for you for doing the combat. So this guy had a pioneer, right? So he had a special step of a pioneer. I attacked this guy who was entrenched. Now I did a one to one for him, so I lost one. Uh, I lost one step, and he lost one step. But he destroyed my pioneer capability, so I no longer have that pioneer capability, but he no longer has his entrenchment either. See, that's good right there, because I could fight my way in. You see, there's another good example for you. Now, I destroyed that unit, and, but the thing is, is he suppressed. You see that he suppressed my pioneer unit. So I don't get that capability. I don't have a full attack with that pioneer unit this turn. So say I was attacking one of these entrenched units, I wouldn't get the benefit of having the pioneer specialist step when attacking that unit. Likewise, he also suppressed one of my steps right there. See how it's... They see how these four are a uh, nice solid blue that one's like a darker or the blue is missing that means that that one that one uh, step there has been suppressed so I'm not going to attack with as much ferocity as I would otherwise What I'm going to do is check this to make sure, okay. So I'm supposed to take this on turn two. See now for where I'm located here, this guy's got zone of control over this tile, this tile, and this tile. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shore up my defenses and make sure that I don't lose my supply here. I have to make sure my supplies stay open.
The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get all my good tanks right out of Dodge and bring them south. Keep him there just in case they really royal they royally uh work on that guy. See I wanna get these tanks over here, keep a nice strong push down here. Now let's take him. Okay, nothing. Now let's enter. Okay, so you can see how they push through here. Now they destroyed that one infantry unit. Now they're coming around. Now they got a breakout. So that's one of the things that you really have to watch and you have to be as careful as possible with on this game is these breakouts like that. The, the, the key to the game and the trick to the game is you take... you. It's, good, it's a lot like war in general too. You find a weak unit you pick on that one weak unit you know make them push them back or whatever and then you exploit that and you try to break out of it so you take for example like i was trying to do here i push that one infantry unit out of the way then i just tried to push through with my panthers try to get behind their lines and get behind them throw them for a loop Sorry about that, trying to trying to text and play at the same time. So here what I think I want to do is I want to give him supply. Give him supply. Let's give him supply. So he'll suppress too, he'll suppress too, but it ain't going to do much for me. All right, that's good. Push through here. Take our objective. As much as I don't want to waste my time back there, I kind of have to with him. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get all these guys and bring them south because I really don't need to worry about this supply point up here. I do have to worry about this supply point right here. That's the key. And frankly, these guys are just gonna try to be um, decoys. bunch of really experienced reinforcements here see how he attacked across the river even though he's a pretty darn strong unit he's attacking across the river 
And now they have a secure bridgehead here. I think what I should have done is taken these guys and brought them all south right away. Oh, he got destroyed. That's not bad. That's not a bad tech. See, my biggest problem here is trying to bust out with these guys because... Well, first they're all entrenched, but these guys are all entrenched, and I don't have any, uh, I don't have any pioneers to try to break through that entrenchment. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring these guys south here. Just try to form a little line as I move south. Let's take him here. And just threaten him a little bit. There, I cut all those units off from supply. Take you. See if we can't force our way in here. Beautiful. Have you cross. And we'll just leave the rest of those guys there. I need a stronger attack out of you. There, and we breached that guy. So let's see if we can't, uh... Hmm. Let's give some supply to you. And he's got to sit there and hold that. And we're just going to have that guy stay there too. Good job. So you may lose that, but that's okay. That's okay. Although I did take that when I was supposed to. I didn't know I was supposed to take that on turn 3 and apparently I was supposed to. Very good. See what, what kind of damage it does to attack across a river there? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can't open this up. Ah. Ah. No, they breached that spot. Technically, though, I don't need to control any of these places where these guys are. I need to control this place and this one. And if I would have been a little bit more intelligent by the way I was dropping my my air supplies, I'd have been all right with that. Oh, how did he get cornered? When they get cornered, that means the next time they get attacked, they're done for.
That could be the key right here to getting all supplies back through here. I'm gonna have to destroy this tank pretty quickly too. So, first things first. We'll get more supply in here for you. For you. For you, since you're just my strongest units. Let's see if we can't force our way through this guy right here. There, now we have supplies going through. to do recapture this objective now we'll just pull these guys a little bit further south again Actually, probably should not should have probably not sh probably should not have put that bridge there. I need to break that guy's entrenchment so I can get into that. Yeah, and I'll retake that, buggers. So this is going to be a close one, actually. All depends on my supplies here. I want you to be supplies. I want you to have supplies. I want you to have them. to destroy him.
Hmm. I should have used that a little bit earlier. No. We still have supplies going through. We'll pull you back. We'll bring you right back here. See what happens on the final turn. I should take two objectives on the final turn. Yeah, this guy will be back in supply now. Unfortunately. Good job. That hurts. Although we still do have supplies coming through, well, not really. I need to keep this guy alive because he's got the pioneer, so I need to have him to be able to break his, um, what the heck's the word? Break his entrenchment. See, this guy I'm not worried about. him beautiful there's that there it is axis victory well if nothing else you know what I'll probably end up doing is I'll, I'll probably end up playing this one over again and see if I can't get a brilliant victory on it because I believe I can I think the couple things I need to do is just not worry about with any of this stuff up here at all. Ever with this. Just take all these guys right off the beginning and start bringing them south. I think that's the first thing I need to do. The second is I made some mistakes here at my supply line. I probably should have uh, knocked these couple units that they had out here first. Destroyed them and then tried to push forward. Um, either there's just some movement errors that I made. Probably should have like... Uh, Move my fresh Panzer unit up into the middle first, and then move to that one back here through to try to capitalize on the uh, on the opening that I that I did get because uh, I knocked this guy off of I knocked the enemy tank unit that was sitting on this objective on the, off on the first turn. I couldn't capitalize on that. Those little things that the, that they do, you have to be able to capitalize on it. But if nothing else, this is a good way to teach you just the basics of playing the game. And if you have any questions, please let me know down in the comments. I'd be more than happy to answer any questions for you. It's a really fun game. Uh, if you're thinking about picking it up, I highly suggest that you do. If you already have it, hopefully the stuff that I talked about, how to play it, will help you. And I look forward to seeing the next one. You stick around to see if I end up playing this one over again and get a brilliant victory on it. And take care. Bye.